and 9, 90 years old and 9. He said, The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. God is laying a foundation for a covenant he is about to establish with Abraham. We are very quick to claim the benefits of a covenant and have no time to read between the lines. Hear me again. We are very quick to claim the benefit of a covenant but have no time to read between the lines. Is there any trigger to this benefit? I don't care. I don't care what you say. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care. I don't care. All I know is that God. No. Read the terms of the covenant. Here God begins to lay out a covenant. The, the foundation of a covenant was going to go. He says what? He <laughs> says, he says, uh, and, okay, verse number uh, one. It says, and said unto him, I am the Lord Almighty. It means, listen, I am Almighty. There's no one mightier than myself. He said, walk before me. God has a challenge for us today. If we enter into the fullness of the benefit of the covenant he has put us in, he wants us to walk before him. Blessed is the man who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated in the way of the sinner, but stand in the way of uh, the, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Say, so walk before me. Walk before me. And do what? And be thou perfect. That, that perfection may not be a direct English word. To say that it means that I can never make an error. I can never make a mistake. That's not what the Bible is talking about. You can meet Bishop George. He will help you to understand that. But in your heart, you have to be perfect. You have to have a perfect heart in your desire for God. You have to have a perfect heart in your availability for his service. You have to have a perfect drive in your heart as the deer pants for the water. That's a perfect heart. Amen. As the deer pants for the water. You cannot go about your whole week completely careless of God. You wake up on Sunday. You spend two hours making up. Then you come to church super late. And then you begin to claim promises. Amen. 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 I don't get it. Seriously. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Verse number two says, And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. This covenant is a covenant of surpassing multiplication. I will increase thee. I will multiply thee exceedingly. It means beyond measure immeasurable. God says, the blessings I want to bring upon your life, you can't measure them. Amen. The Bible says, it says, it says, bring your tithe into the house and see if God will not open the windows of heaven and do what? And pour out a blessing such that you cannot be able to contain. Amen. What is in God's mind in terms of the covenant he has established with us is to make us become the point of jealousy for the world. That the world looks at you and say, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Do you know the Bible said the time is coming when 10 people will hold you by your skirt and say, we want to go with you to the house of the Lord. Yeah. What is going to cause that to happen? Yeah. It's because of the multiplication they see God bringing upon your life. Yeah. It's because of the increase that they see God... The Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. The reason God wants to bless you is to cause the heathens to begin to glorify Him. But we should circuit our blessings by failing to remember that in the promise of blessing, there is a word of expectation. So, God does not hold it. Remember Daniel? 
He was praying. The Bible says from day one he prayed. His prayer was answered. But what happened? The prince of Persia intercepted. And his prayer or the response to his prayer was held back for 20 more days. And because he didn't give up, an angel was sent to release. That is to let us know that when we pray, standing in the right place, and we don't see the response, it's not because God doesn't want to respond. It's because our manner of life and our manner of relationship to the covenant poses an obstacle in itself to that response that God has actually released. Amen. Very crucial. Now, verse number three. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, my covenant is with you. As for me, I'm done talking, man. I'm not. I wasn't testing what I was talking. I wasn't trying to see if it is something that I can afford. You know, sometimes you make a promise to your kid, and then when they come now for you to fulfill, you say, Oh, yeah, I was hoping that. I would have gotten that bonus. I was hoping that I would have gotten my paycheck. I was hoping that, I'm sorry, I can't make it happen now. That's not what God is saying here. God tells you, God tells Abraham, God tells me, listen to me. When it comes to my part of the covenant, it's settled. I'm done. I'm not thinking over it. I'm not, I don't have the possibility of changing my mind. I have said exactly what I want to do. I have said exactly what I'm capable of doing. See, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Amen. Neither shall thy name be any more Abraham, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. The covenant that God establishes with his children is far reaching. You see, in the, in, the, in the Old Testament, the covenant God had with the children of God or with the children of Israel, where he was distributing assignments, establishing priests, establishing prophets, you know, you had to belong to a priestly you had to belong to be, belong to a priestly family for you to become a priest. They wouldn't just come to church today and say, "Hey, this brother looks very good. I think we're going to make him a priest." <laughs> you had to belong to that family of priests. That's what God is saying here. It says, "The covenant that I'm establishing with you." If you are reading the book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse uh, 21, the covenant I'm establishing with you is not only with you. I want your children to grow up and know that their father served a God who is mighty. Mm -hmm. I serve a God who is mighty. Hallelujah. I serve a God who is powerful. Hallelujah. This God is a big God. Call him a miracle. God wants your children to grow up. Not here that my daddy used to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. you, my grandchildren shouldn't come up and hear our granddad. I, we hear he was a pastor at Champions Temple. Are you kidding me? <laughs> God wants for the covenant that he has with me to transcend me, transcend my children, go beyond my grandchildren Amen. and go down. Amen. So that Pastor Moses is a pastor. His son is a pastor. His son's son is a pastor. Amen. He says, as for me, this is my covenant with thee, or with them, said the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my word which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth. Amen. God has not called us to test this Christian walk. You don't come in to test the waters. Is it sweeter in church or is it sweeter in the world? 
Amen. Is it better for me to be in church on Friday or I should go to the club on Friday? <laughs> we came here for all night. You punish us. Only how many people? Bishop Judge drove from Grand Fox. We sleep in his eyes. You're warming your bed now. Amen. Amen. You're warming your bed. From Grand Fox, we sleep in his eyes. A married man. Some of you will not have the courage to tell us where you were that night. <laughs> because you know if you say it, it's terribly shameful. Amen. Can I have freedom to speak with you? Amen. Right on. Amen. I'm not condemning you. If you don't grow, you will not access your covenant benefits. Amen. The pastor can scream all he wants, he can pray all the prayer, he can give you holy slap. <laughs> Some of you are not laughing because you were too late for Sunday school. <laughs> too late. God's covenant with you is intended to go down generations. Amen. Time is going and I've not even started. Now, I want you to understand one thing. In his covenant, we are at different contract levels. We read John, did we read John chapter, yeah, no, we didn't read John. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. When we read that scripture, or what, what, before we even read that, I want us to understand that in this covenant, thank you. They gave me one before, now I, okay. I don't know why I kept it, thank you. In this covenant relationship, we're at different levels. When you enter into this covenant with Christ, we all start. We all start at a believer level. We are believers in Christ. Do you know people make their bed and sleep and say that we have arrived? We are believers. I'm a believer. We have arrived. I'm a child of God. I'm a believer. When we come in as believers, God wants us to grow to become disciples. God wants us to become servants. God wants us to become his friends. And eventually we become sons. So when you go to the place of prayer, the kind of thing that disciples are demanding from God, believers can spend their day talking about or asking from God. They will not see it. That is the reason why sometimes people pray. Sometimes God is faithful. Sometimes we pray, we, we get answers. Sometimes we pray, we don't get answer. What is going on? We are placing the wrong demands from the wrong position. Amen. Most of the children of God are at believers level. They are not growing. God wants us to grow into disciples. Verse number 31 of John chapter 8. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him. The Jews who did what? They were already believers. Jesus spoke to Jews who were already believers. So that you have become a believer doesn't mean you've heard enough from God. Doesn't mean you have attained it. He says what? If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So there are believers who don't continue in God's word. They are believers. And so they are not disciples. When you become a believer, God places an expectation that you will crave for the word, you will seek the word, and you will grow by the word. That is why James says like newborn babies, you should crave for the word. And you may grow thereby. Now, that word is not to fill your head with. It's not so that you can quote scripture. So you can remind the bishop, what you just said there, I think there's another Bible verse that said different from what you do. That's not the goal of, that's not what the Bible is talking about, continuing God's word. Continuation in God's word is your ability to allow the word of God to have authority over your life. Amen. And by the way, don't forget to remember that the word of God is Jesus himself. You carry Jesus on the inside of you. You don't give him power and authority. 
to manage your life. You are not his disciple. Having become believers, you need to allow Jesus to begin to command your life, to begin to direct your life, to begin to assign your life, to begin to point you in what direction you go. He says, it is only when you continue in my word. To continue means you don't obey today and tomorrow you disobey. You don't seek the will of God today and tomorrow you choose your own will. Do you know that some people who know clearly that this is what God will have me do? But they do exactly what their flesh is asking them to do. Amen. How can you say you are a disciple? You know. You know that Friday is not my day. Can somebody be craving that, oh, yeah, I know I work on Fridays. Or I work every other Friday. What do you do without Friday that you're not working? What do you do without Wednesday? Are you kidding me? That uh, 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 the, the, the Reverend Mora or the mother of the church has decided to even reward people who come to church early. She spends her money to buy gifts, presents. Even that is not enough to move you out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> What else should we do to encourage you? Are you kidding me? You are operating on a believer's level. Those are the people who will ask you, are you saying that I'm not a child of God? Nobody say you are not. We're just saying grow. Grow up. Grow up. Are you? Are you grow up. In your house, if your child is 10, 15, you it is not okay for you to be washing plates. Oh, yeah. You don't feel, you don't think that it's okay. Yep. Yeah. But in the church here, what does Bishop Josh not do? Tell me one thing he doesn't do. No, tell me one thing Bishop Josh doesn't do. Bishop uh, Cooper. Tell me one thing he doesn't do. He comes with sweeps. He comes with air. Turns on air condition. He turns the light on. He's moving up and down. Uh, even the people on the technical team. My brother, are you available? Can you help? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? When we start to pray, you start claiming things that are bigger than what the bishop can claim. <laughs> and God is supposed to be so foolish that he ignores everything else and only listens to you. You and God, who is more righteous? Who knows what the right thing is? He's laid out the right thing, you ignore all of that and you place demands. And you actually say, people always say, I don't care, I don't care. But you, I don't care. I demand what I want. I don't care what they will say. I don't care what the I don't care what the devil says. No, they, sometimes the devil is accusing you justly before God. <laughs> Make your ways right. This covenant, this month, in this month, in this month, if you don't explode, I was telling some people, you know. I, I do some financial education. At the right time, I'm going to talk to you about it. But I was telling some people on what they need to do in this season. They said, oh, I don't have money. I told them, you have a, a coronavirus check. Yeah. What do they call it? Stimulus, stimulus check. You have stimulus check. <laughs> you have taxes coming in. You have a paycheck. And you say you don't have money. I say you have a problem. <laughs> you have a problem. Anybody who still say they don't have money in this season, you have a problem. I don't see another year coming that you are going to get a stimulus check. Money you never, never thought it was going to come. July, say it, What? July, another one. Another one. Please remind me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, I'm not going to be able to finish what I have to say, but give me five more minutes. Do I have your permission? Yes. Do I have your permission? Yes. Anybody who doesn't say yes, you're not going to eat after church. <laughs> Do I have your permission? Yes. Okay. Praise God. Okay. Now, verse number 32. It says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall save you. Actually, King James says the truth will make you free. If I want to go into the, into details, there's a difference between setting and making. God made man. 
God didn't save man. Man lost that authority. And God wants to restore. So he's not setting, he's making. God wants to remake your life. He wants to make you free. But you need to give attention to the truth. And the truth is the word of God. And the word of God is Jesus. Please. Bishop Josh was speaking this morning and said, you, church should not become a routine. You are coming to church to, because, oh yeah, it's one of the things I have to do. There has to be a drive. There has to be a hunger. There has to be a desire in your heart. They, you have to be looking forward to Wednesday. I wasn't yet a full member of the church when they decided on this midweek service. And I was in that meeting. And I could see from the heart of the bishops that they really want to offer opportunity for people to grow. They know that some people miss Sundays because they were working. At least Wednesday they should be available. Are you? <laughs> and you are not here. Not that you are working. You are not here. I mean, it's just not too important for you. You are cheating yourself. Amen. Amen. One of the desires of the bishop is that Wednesday, in terms of attendance and hunger for God, we get in competition with Sunday. So that on Wednesday, we will find room to have people sit down, and there's no room because the whole place is full. Don't be a Sunday, Sunday Christian. Amen. Amen. So it's very important for us to know that we are different levels, because if we're not, if we don't know that, we are going to be placing demands at levels that we, not, that we do not belong to. Now, I would, have been, I would have loved to go in and show you a little bit the difference in terms of expectation. The difference between believers, disciples, friends, servants, and sons. But we are going to skip that and leave that for one moment. Let me read the last scripture and I will let you go. When you approach God and you expect God to respond to you, it helps to know how to approach Him. Don't waste your time in the place of prayer making demands that will not reach you, that will not answer. God intends for us to grow into sons. God brought us in as believers. I'm in a business where whether you have a PhD, you have whatever, you begin at the same level. That's what God, that's how our relationship with God is. He brings all of us in as believers. But he doesn't intend for anybody to remain a believer. It's not enough. He wants for us to grow through discipleship, through servanthood, through friendship, and becoming sons. That's his goal. Now, Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, Now I say that, now I say that the hair, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the time. When we come in and we remain as believers, even though so much has been laid up for us as sons, God sees us as sons, but we operate as believers. God holds up those blessings that belong to people that are at the contract level of sons, and then he expects for us to grow up. The Bible says the son, the child, does not differ from a slave for as long as they are ignorant, as long as they are still a child. He said it takes time for them to grow and become of age to be able to access the things that have been laid away. Laid away by their father for them. So this is just to help us know that we need to match God's expectation, the expectation of growing up into sonship. We will have the time to share 
What is expected of the son? What is expected of a servant? What is expected of a friend? And all of that. But may God help us to begin to desire to grow. It is not enough to come in on Sunday. I need to improve. I need to start aiming. As much as I desire to be at work every day, let that be my desire to be in church every day. As much as I want to pick up extra sheep, let me attend extra services within the week. Are you hearing me, anybody? Do you know there are people who say, Monday I have to be here, Tuesday I have to be here, Wednesday, when, when do I have to? But when it is at work, it's different, right? But may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you just stand up and let us pray in Jesus' name? One of them is In Jesus' mighty name.